Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and today we are continuing with our AI development in Unity. Okay, last time we extended our basic AI a little more and today we are continuing with that trend. We are going to add a new state to the basic AI, add some raycast for sight, and edit the trigger functionality that is, cur that is currently in place. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to create a new script because I don't want to totally overwrite the basic AI script that I already have. So I'm just going to right click, create, C sharp script. And I'm going to name this enemy site. Okay, and inside of this enemy site script, I'm actually going to copy basic AI and paste it inside of this enemy site. Now, when you do this, you need to make sure to find and replace all of the instances of basic AI. So, what on Mac you can do Command F and then click on this little drop down here, and then you can see I've already done this in the past, but essentially just type in basic AI up here. So basic AI, and then type in enemy site right here, and then click on replace all. Okay, and that's going to remove any of the errors um, that you'll run into, you know, for like basic AI is not available and things like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and close down these other scripts I have open. Okay, and as I said before, we're going to be adding several things to this script. The first thing we're going to actually add, though, is a new state. So inside of our public enum state, we're just going to type out investigate. All right, and since we're adding a new state, we're going to go ahead and add um, some variables for that state, and we're going to add some variables for the site um, that we're going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and do variables for investigating and variables for site. Okay, and inside of our variables for investigating, we're going to need a private vector three, and we're just going to call that investigate spot. We're also going to need a private float, and we're going to call that timer and set that equal to zero. And then we're going to need a public float investigate wait. And I'm going to set this to 10 initially. Okay, and now we want to set up our variables for site. And for this, we're going to need a public float height multiplier. All right, and we're going to need a public float site distance, or DIST. And I'm going to go ahead and set that equal to 10. Okay, so now that we have all of these new variables in place, we're going to go ahead and initialize the height multiplier to 1.36f. Okay, and I've already tested this number out, and that's why I'm using it, but I'll show you how I got that number once we get into the testing of these updates. Okay, the next thing I'm, wanted, I'm going to do is I'm going to add our new case, and this new case is going to be case state.investigate, and we're actually going to call an investigate method here and make sure you put in your break statement All right, and that's all we have to do to the finite state machine okay the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and code up our investigate method here and again we're just gonna call that investigate not gonna take any parameters curly braces there are really two ways to do this method one way is to take all of the raycasting out of this method and put it in fixed update or you can put the raycasting inside of this method. For now I'm going to put it all inside of this method and then if we have time at the end of this video I'll go back and put it outside of the method and show you maybe the benefits and you know the downsides of both. Okay but for the first thing we need to do in this method is do timer plus equals time dot delta time. And the next thing we need to do is start working on our raycast. So I'm going to say raycast hit is hit and now what I want to do is I actually want to create three um, rays that we can physically see in the scene you know so when we're looking at the scene view I want to be able to see these rays and to do that you can do a debug dot draw ray and we're doing three one from one straight ahead one like 40 degrees to the right and 40 degrees to the left Okay, and so to do that, the, you know, we have to do some, some manipulation, but it's not too bad. So for the first one, though, we're going to do transform dot 
position plus vector three dot up times the height multiplier. Okay, and this first parameter here is just the starting vector three. The next parameter is actually going to be the direction to travel. And that's going to be transformed up forward for this first one times the site distance. So we want it to go for a limited amount of distance. So that's that site distance that we created earlier. The last thing we need to do here is set the color. And I'm going to set the color equal to green. Okay, and that's all we really need in that first one. But I'm going to go ahead and copy that and paste it twice because we need two more. And in, these, in the second one, what we're going to do is we're going to encapsulate transform.forward with parentheses. And inside of these parentheses, we're going to do transform.forward plus transform dot right and then after the parentheses we're going to do dot normalized okay and that's going to be times the site distance so essentially what that's going to do is give us a 45 degree angle to the right okay and we need to do the same thing again in the last draw right here except this time we're going to do minus transform dot right because unity does not have a transform dot left essentially what we're doing is we're just saying the opposite Oh, sorry. I was saying transform dot left, so I typed it out. <laughs> so, because Unity does not have a transform dot left, so we're doing the opposite of the transform dot right, which would in fact be a transform dot left. And then make sure you do a normalized, and that should be it for the visual repre representations of these rays. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to start coding up our actual rays here. So I'm going to do if physics dot raycast and then we have to put in the parameters for the raycast and again it's going to be transform dot position plus vector three dot up times the height multiplier then a comma transform dot forward and then our out is going to be hit and we're going to do site distance for our max distance here. Okay, make sure you open up your curly braces. Oop, I forgot a parentheses there. There we go. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to say if hit dot collider dot game object dot tag is equal to player. Oops. Equal to player then what we're going to do is we're going to change our state and we're going to set the state equal to enemy site dot state dot chase okay we also need to set the target of chase which is going to be target is equal to hit dot collider dot game object and that should be all for this first raycast. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm just going to again copy this entire if statement here and then I'm just going to paste it twice. So again we've got these three rays that we're shooting out and again you may have already guessed this but we need to modify this transform.forward again and we're just going to do transform.forward plus transform.right and we're going to normalize it so dot normalized And on this last one, again, transform.forward minus transform.right dot normalized. Okay, and that's all we really have to do for these raycasts. Raycasts are fairly intimidating when you first start using them, but the more you use them, the easier they become, really. Um, that's sort of true for a lot of coding, so practice, uh, practice leads to perfection. All right, we do have to do a few more things inside of this method, you know, so those things include setting a new destination, um, stopping the character's movement, and making the character look at the, um, the player's position. And we also need to do something if the timer goes over the wait time. So what we're going to do is we're going to say agent.setDestination, oops, sorry, set destination, and that's going to be this dot transform dot position so essentially what I want to do is I want the character to stop moving exactly where you know so immediately stop moving and then in order to really keep the 
character stationary, we need to do a character.move, and we're going to do vector3.0. And we're not crouching here, and we're not jumping. So again, stop where you are, and definitely don't move. If you don't do the character.move with a vector3 of 0, then you get some really weird behavior where he's just sort of sliding and not playing any, any, any animation, so it looks really, really odd. Okay, the next thing we need to do is actually do a transform.lookat. And I'm doing this because I want the enemy to turn and look at the player's position. So what we're going to do is say investigate spot here. Okay, and the last thing we need is we need one more if statement and we're going to say if timer is greater than or equal to investigate wait then we're going to change our state equal to enemy site dot state dot patrol so essentially you know if I don't actually see the player then I need to go back to patrolling and make sure you set your timer equal to zero again Okay, there's one last thing we need to actually do to this script, and that's change the trigger functionality, or the on trigger enter functionality. And so what we're going to do here is just erase what we currently have, and we're going to change the state equal to enemy site dot state dot investigate. So instead of going immediately into chase, we want to change so that we're going into that investigate state instead. And then we're also going to set investigate spot equal to col.gameobject.transform.position. Okay, that's going to do it for these for the script updates here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Let's go back to our Unity instance. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to remove a few of these AI because I want to do some really um, some really sort of intense testing here. And this can be a little hard to test. Because, you know, essentially, you can enter the trigger and not know it, okay? And the player only reacts when he can actually see you. So if you're inside of that line of sight of one of those rays, then he's going to react. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable these guys. And this on this one that I still have enabled, I'm going to scroll down. And next I'm just going to disable this basic AI script instead of removing it. And drop the enemy sight script on there instead. Okay, and everything should be set up through or initialized through the script here so we don't have to drag anything into place. And I'm going to go ahead and click play. And I'm actually going to go back to our scene view here. So as you can see, he's still moving around like he should. And one cool thing you can do from the scene view is actually drag your character around. So I'm going to try to you know, get inside of that trigger without being seen, which can be a little complicated. So, okay, I actually managed to get through without being seen. But as you can see, oh god, he saw me that time. <laughs> so it is still very difficult to sort of evade um, that line of sight. But as you saw, what happened there was um, he turned, he looked at the position, he turned his raycast on, and he stopped and waited. So. What we're going to do here is instead of actually dragging around the player to see if we can trip, trick that, what we're going to do is we're going to just in our inspector over here, let me click on the AI here, I'm just going to set this state equal to investigate. And so when you do that, you can see that he is turning and he is looking in a general direction. And I believe he's actually looking at zero, zero, zero because that array or that vector is not actually initialized. So after a set amount of time, he actually goes back to um, patrolling again because he obviously he didn't see the player. Okay, let me go ahead and end this play session again. And okay, we're at 18 minutes, so I think I have enough time to show you guys the other way of scripting this out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll over to enemy side again, and I'm actually going to create our fixed update method and put the raycasts inside of that. So what I'm going to do is say void fixed update. And fixed update is actually used for physics. And inside of this, I'm going to remove all of our raycast code. 
So just control or command X and then command V. So now all of our Raycast information is inside of fixed update and the investigate function still, it doesn't need to be changed. You know, that's what's sort of great about this script is that, you know, we don't have to change any of this now. We can just very easily move all of this Raycast information down to here. And now I'm going to click save, go back over to Unity and press play. And this is a very different AI, you know, because right now what's happening is the character is walking around sort of 24-7 with those rays, always projecting these rays. And again, I said at the beginning that I'd show you why we did that height multiplier, multiplier like we did. And, you know, the reason why we did that is because, well, let me, let me cancel that out and then I'm going to go back. The reason why we set the height multiplier, multiplier like we did is pretty simple, actually. And it's because that height multiplier is setting where the rays are casted from the player. So if I drop this down a little bit, you know, now it's at 0.32, you can see that it's actually coming out from his legs, which we really don't want. So that initial value or that value we used of 1.36 should, should work in your scenes you know, depending on the scale of your AI characters. And we can also, we can also increase the sight distance fairly easily as well. So if I, you know, drastically up this sight distance, so now it's at about 20, you can see that it's going well beyond the initial trigger. So if you want your character to always be walking around with his sight turned on, you can have it that way as well. Okay, guys. That's going to do it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop us a like. If you like the channel, be sure to subscribe. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial.